in this video I'll dive into one of the biggest issues for landscape photographers. What do you do when the weather just doesn't behave and don't give you the light you hoped for? I've partly recorded this video while running a workshop in the Faroe Islands along with Nick Page and as to be expected from the Faroe Islands, the weather doesn't always play ball with you. So, back in the Faroe Islands and uh, yeah, I'm here with Nick who is struggling as always. <laughs> Not as always, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, so we are at a, at a beautiful little town called Jack. I think it's pronounced like that. And we are in a rock, uh, lava rock formation is location with some sea, a beautiful mountain here. And I found this reflection in this very still water. And then suddenly we have some big waves coming in over here, but I try to ignore those right now. And as you can see, I found this composition right here. Just turn this one on. And there is a small rock right there where I am walking out, standing on that to help make a reflection. Shooting at f16 just to get the entire thing in focus. I could probably shoot at f8, no matter. ISO 200. And you can see I got a shot that looks something like this. So a beautiful reflection shot with a mountain as a backdrop. And yeah, no biggie, but it looks beautiful. It's a little bit hard today because it's very much like snowy. And when you get far up you can see how the mountain right here is basically being washed out and then it just falls into the white sky so it becomes a very moody and very minimal shot with not a whole lot of information in the sky but I guess they, they can work too and they sure can the snowy weather made this photo predominantly high key which is something I don't always like for my landscape photos but I think it works in this case the added snowy atmosphere helps to separate me from the background. But in the case of this scene, I wanted the mountain to be my main subject. Due to the snow, the mountain was fairly washed out. So when you can hardly see your subject, you will have to work around that and add something else of interest. Something else the viewer can attach their eye to in the photo. In this case, that was me. The result may be different from what you imagined, but that's usually a good thing as you may get something a bit more original than what is the most obvious shot. I got this other photo from the same location but with another foreground. As the mountain was still a bit washed out due to the snowy atmosphere, it's all about finding some visual interest for the foreground. I think this beautiful little stream does a fantastic job at that. With a shutter speed of a quarter of a second, I smooth out the water, yet keep just enough details and texture in it to keep the sense of flow and water. So we have made it to Chernovic and it is a nice and moody day. And I think that is going to be the theme of this video. Right now I am focusing on this little scene here. So we have stone here in the foreground and then we have a beautiful background here, the classic shot of the two sea stacks right here and this cliff here at the side. Usually I use the long lens, as you can see up here, as they're doing here, Nick is doing, all the guests are doing. So they're just using the long lens to zoom in and catch some waves in front of the two sea stacks. What I am aiming at right now is with the wide angle lens to have a composition like this photographing this little stone here and then I'm waiting for some waves coming up and around the stone. It looks really nice because this far up the beach the waves tend to be fairly soft, fairly slow, so they give some nice streaks. My settings right now, ISO 50, F16 and that gives me a shutter speed of one second and as you can see I already have a few different versions here and you can see it's it's some nice soft streaks already. So the thing I'm also doing right now you can see here I have the setting where I have a two second timer and then I'm in continuous shooting with five shots so the camera takes five photos after another after two seconds. So I basically just have to hit the shutter once and then the camera waits two seconds and takes five photos after each other. So I tend to start and click the shutter once the waves are here and then it takes five shots while the wave is around and then I start it again 
and take some shots while the wave is on the way out. But right now it looks as if it's more interesting with the photos coming in. So here may come some waves. So generally the weather has been quite moody, not super rainy so far, but cloudy with a little bit of texture. <laughs> the previous photo didn't have a whole lot of texture in the clouds, but uh, there's some text in the clouds today, which is really nice. It gives a little bit more interest up there. But yeah, the pharaohs living up <laughs> to their reputation, being moody with different kinds of, of weather. It's also quite snowy. <laughs> it's also I'd like to take this opportunity to say you should ignore everything that he just said, because it's all wrong. <laughs> He's shooting a completely different composition to me, so it's got to be wrong. It's got to be wrong. It's good, Nick. <laughs> yep so uh, yeah it's also nice to photograph in the Faroe Islands during winter because I haven't really photographed up here with a whole lot of snow uh, when I was here in December three years ago it was beautiful weather but no snow whatsoever and uh, yeah right now with snow so it uh, gives a little bit of uh, interest and, and different uh, variety is the word I'm looking for to my portfolio on my homepage so yeah you can check that one out all the time to watch some of my pharaoh's photos. So this photo also turned out decently well, having some more interest in the clouds than the previous photo. That being said, I do think I prefer the photo with the washed out mountain to this one. I like the foreground here with the added interest of the water streaks, but the background feels a bit too small with a wide angle lens. I also got this photo with the long lens and for the most part I do find the long lens to deliver my favorite photos from this location. The breaking waves and clouds add interest beyond two sea stacks. If I hadn't had the texture rich clouds I would surely have zoomed further into the sea stacks to minimize the size of the sky in the photo and have the ocean and breaking waves take up more space of the photo. Just listen to what Nick has to say about that. So Nick. <laughs> Oh. We're, we're down here. There, there we are. There I'm we not go. That. Oh, no. <laughs> what is your success rate on this uh, trip? Uh, about 101 <laughs> percent. Whoa! <laughs> no. And you're not even it's, vlogging it. I'm not even vlogging it. I don't do that anymore, bro. No. Yeah, I no. can see. Yeah, you. No, it's fallen off. Yeah, yeah. Fallen off the face of the earth. I don't exist anymore. No. Con contrary to what pop people are saying. No, it's it's beautiful. We have some interesting flat light, which is contrary to it. But actually, in this situation, it's really nice because in my particular composition, I'm able to exclude all of the sky, and it makes the, the foam and the water and the waves that we're getting the brightest thing in the image, which oftentimes can make for a fairly successful photo. It, it draws the eye right to you know the main subject, which in this case are these beautiful curling waves. So I'm happy with what I'm getting, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm pretty sure I got a better shot than you, so we're good. You know, all is well with the world. <laughs> all is right. I as love long it. as I outshoot this guy, we're good. It <laughs> makes for a good day. This is, a, this is American confidence for you right <laughs> here. This is why they are on top of the world, the leaders of the world. As, as, long as, we have a <laughs> as long as we have a rule to where we have to use the skies that we get today, <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 always beautiful, and we don't have any wind, which is nice. Yesterday yeah, for we, once, <laughs> we almost got blown away yesterday. So today's a nice reprieve from that. So that's good. Yeah, great. Yeah, perfect. We ended this day at the small town of Aie, where we photographed the snow-covered mountains from the beach. I found this little group of stones which kind of frames my foreground where I again caught the waves coming towards me using a shutter speed of 0.3 seconds. The semi long exposed waves in combination with the framing rocks just makes for a super interesting foreground leading the eye up the beautiful snow covered mountains in the background. If you enjoyed this video up until now I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. It all helps to show the YouTube algorithm that this video is worth pushing out to other like-minded photographers. What the photos I've shown so far have in common besides the moody weather is a strong yet simple composition. Visual flow, framing, balance, symmetry, clean edges, simplification and that there is no doubt about what you're supposed to look at in the scene is just so utterly important. 
If you want to learn even more about composition and learn about how I use these different tools or concepts, be sure to get my two ebooks on composition. They are super simple to read with minimal text as to get to the point fast and has loads of photos to prove the point of what I am discussing. You can get a free light version of both ebooks if you want to check them out first before buying via the links in the description. So we made it to Kalsoy. I think this may be like the third time I'm recording a little bit of video from this location here in the Faroe Islands, but it's just so beautiful. And we have perfectly beautiful mood today. We're still crossing our fingers that the sun will come out. According to the forecast, there is a chance. But right now the cloud cover is actually really, really nice for these super moody photos right above us it, the weather is decently good but all the way around out here in the background we have loads of showers snow showers rain showers all around us and it just looks so good because they wrap our subjects the sea stacks here in the background the mountain up here the clouds simply wrap our subjects so that it frames them and it just looks so good. So one of the photos I've been working on is all the way out here at the famous sea stacks. I've just put on the long lens and right now as you can see you can you can't really see them because the shower out there in the background is hiding them but just before you can see here I got a few shots where the sea stacks are wrapped so this is another direction but yeah, you can see here. So here we can see it and we have a cloud up here that wraps the sea stacks. Looks absolutely gorgeous. So when the clouds are in the right position over here, I will see if I can get myself a panorama. I'm not sure where that will be better than anything I already have, but it is as per always absolutely gorgeous up here. And you can see here is another view and you can see these heavy showers coming in in the background just creating so much drama and mood and we have a person up here he just walked here before so that also made for some really nice photos so yeah beautiful clouds today and a good thing about like having a little bit of wind and these kind of clouds is that the weather actually changes quite a lot so we may not be able to see our subject out here right now but <laughs> they are coming back so Nick is as per always photobombing me how do you like it Nick? I'm, I'm vlog bombing you you're vlog bombing me vlog yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah here's the photos This first photo really illustrates the point about wrapping your subject and using frames as a compositional tool. In the photo I use the snow shower to make a frame on the upper and right side of the photo so your eye is drawn into the middle and brighter part of the two sea stacks. I absolutely love the mood and the dynamics the shower adds to the photo. It obviously also helps a lot to edit the photo so you can really bring out the details and make sure you add attention to the parts of the photo you want to show. This is another example where I shot in the other direction. Here you can see how the bottom mountain ridge and the edge of the clouds not just frames the scene, but the two lines also mirror each other. To get myself in the scene, I used my intervalometer and shot a time lapse, which you can see here. I took myself in an optimal position and added me to my favorite of the different photos I caught in this session. As mentioned, I also tried to make a moody panorama where I once again used the dark and ominous clouds to wrap the scene. 
I think it turned out pretty good, however we also had the sun poke out for about 20 seconds, which is a very short time to make an HDR panorama, but I think this one also turned out quite good. A little hard to select my favorite, but in this case I actually think I again lean a bit towards the moody version over the sunlit version. They've of course both benefited from some editing to really pull out all those beautiful details in the scenes. If you want to learn how I edit my photos, be sure to enroll in my huge post-processing course Photoshop for Landscape Photographers from beginner to advanced. Here I progressively introduce you to the different tools and techniques I use in Photoshop to edit my photos. I also discuss why and when you'd want to use what techniques and my philosophy around editing landscape photos. It is of course entirely up to yourself which techniques and what learning you want to apply to your editing. But this is the course where I show everything I know. How to use luminosity masking, how to add or enhance glow and atmosphere, how to focus stack, how to focal length blend, how to edit different conditions and much, 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 much more. There is a link and a discount code in the description of the video if you want to save a bit of money. There is of course this entire debate about what beneficial and good photography conditions are and it is of course very subjective. The light can be flat and boring, but that doesn't mean you can't create beautiful and interesting photos. You generally just have to make sure you don't depend on very specific weather conditions to make the photos you want to make. If you don't get the conditions you want, it is a great idea to think outside the box and try to approach the landscape you're in from another angle. Interesting landscapes in themselves, like what the Faroe Islands presents, are of course beneficial. But even here you still need to think outside the box, make strong compositions and use beneficial editing if the weather is a bit meh. However, optimally, try to use the conditions to your advantage and try many different things. Different shutter speeds, different compositions, different apertures and different edits. And if everything else fails, just wait 5 minutes until the weather has changed. One final photo I want to show is this one from Gaza da Lua. Of course we all wanted a beautiful sunset photo with a rainbow shining through the waterfall, butterflies flying all around us and unicorns dancing on the meadows. So it wasn't super encouraging when we got hit by a snow shower straight in our face. However, instead of packing up my gear, I wanted to use the snow which was flying straight towards the camera to show the dramatic and unruly weather of the pharaohs and I think it turned out really, really well. I hope you learned a thing or two, check out Nick's channel, check out the links in the description for my ebooks, use the coupon code to save some money on my photoshop course and as always I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment. See you in the next video.